Let's look next at types of movements associated with moving our bones. Now notice we got three categories right here, gliding, angular, and circular. We're looking at the gliding, you're talking about two flat opposing surfaces sliding over each other. Think about the big bodies of your vertebrae, say in the lumbar region or thoracic region, something like that. Bend left, right, forward, back, and anywhere in between, those flat bodies glide over the sur surface of each other. After that, we got angular. We'll look at flexion and extension. And within it, there's some others like hyperextension, plantar flexion, and dorsiflexion. And then there's abduction and adduction. Those are all angular movements. Then we'll look at a few circular, rotation, pronation, supination, and circumduction. <clears throat> so going back to the flexion and extension, best way to define those is this. Flexion is to decrease the angle between two linear structures, and extension is to increase the angle between two linear structures. Now let's look at an example of this. Let's say you got one of your upper limbs straight down at your side and you bend at your elbow. Look at what you've got, two linear structures. Think about where that humerus is at in that brachial region. Then we got, say, your radius and ulna and hand. Well, if you're flexing, you're bringing your hand up. You've got two straight linear parts which are moving closer to each other as you bend at your elbow. So that's what they mean by moving the bones closer together. If you take your hand and put it straight back down at your side, you're increasing the angle between the upper part of your upper limb and then your forearm down below it. That's moving the bones further apart. Now, in most cases, flexing will be bringing your body part forward in an anterior direction. Extension will be to move a body part back in a posterior. But there is an exception to that rule when you bend at your knees. So that's why the angle between two linear structures is the better way to remember it. Either bringing those linear structures closer or further apart. Hyperextension is where you take some motion out of the normal range. This can sometimes cause damage. Often an outside force is needed to take a motion outside the normal range. Muscles generally won't do that. And generally anything above, beyond 180 degrees is considered hyperextension. Next we have dorsiflexion and plantar flexion. Looking at the plantar flexion, this is called particular down at your foot. So if you stand up on your toes, that's the plantar. <clears throat> the dorsi is just the opposite. Dorsiflexion is lifting your foot up, in other words, going back on your heels. Next, we have abduction with a B in it, and then adduction. Abduction is to move away from the median plane, and adduction is to move back towards it. So let's say you start in an anatomic position. You got your feet together and your hands straight down at your side. Think about what you do when you do a jumping jack. You take your feet and your upper limbs and you move them straight outward. When you're moving out away from your body, away from the middle line, which is the median, <clears throat> that's abduction. Now, if you bring it all back together, say bring your feet together and your hands back down at your side, that's adduction, back towards the median plane. Then we have some circular movements. Rotation, the turning of a structure on its long axis. They mentioned rotation of the head as an example, but movement of your humerus is a good example too. Think about again if you flex at your elbow and you swing your hand in and out, left and right. Well, that would be a medial when it's coming towards the middle, midline of your body. Lateral when it's going out away from it. Medial and lateral rotation. If you look up there at that humerus when you swing that hand in and out, that humerus is rotating. Pronation and supination <clears throat> refers to a unique rotation at your forearm, talking about with your hand right there. Now, if your palm is posterior to the back, that's pronation. Again, you got to think about the anatomic position. Remember <clears throat> where you have your hand straight down at your side. So pronation is facing posterior back, supination forward. Sometimes you hear about this used with somebody saying for the palms up or down, or your entire body being up or down. So sometimes you're here with pronation, palm down, or your entire body face down, supination up. But again, go with the palm posterior and anterior, best examples. Circular movements like circumduction. You need something like a ball and socket joint at your shoulder to accomplish this. Think about if you swing your hand in a big wide circle, broad as you can, it's a cone-shaped motion, 
that's circumduction. So again, someplace like your shoulder, ball and socket joint is where that's going to happen. Then we have some of these special movements. <clears throat> we'll look at elevation and depression, protraction and retraction, a lateral and medial excursion, opposition, reposition, inversion and eversion. So up here with elevation and depression to move something in a superior or inferior direction. So if you elevate something, you think about taking it up, but remember superior doesn't mean up, it means closer towards the top of your head. So think about like when you shrug your shoulders, you bring your shoulders up, that's elevation, back down, depression, superior and inferior direction. Protraction and retraction. Protraction, you got a gliding motion in a forward anterior, <clears throat> retraction, back, posterior, right back where you started in the anatomic position. If you think about this, this generally just happens with your mandible. They mentioned the scapula down here. You won't see that too much, but with your mandible, you can slide it forward or slide it back. Think something like a bulldog with that overbite they have. That's a lot of protraction to the front. If you were to move it back, that'd be retraction. Then we have lateral and medial excursion. This is a side-to-side -side action of the mandible. Think about when you're chewing something like a piece of meat on your molars, those rear teeth. Think about it when you watch a cow chew, how they chew side-to-side. -side. <clears throat> we always start in that anatomic position. You could do a lateral excursion left or right. And if you bring it right back to the center, that's medial excursion. Opposition and reposition are particular to your thumb and little finger. So opposition is to take the thumb and little finger and touch them. Reposition, going right back where you started in the anatomic position. Inversion and eversion, this is unique down to your foot and ankle. <clears throat> now inversion is turning the ankle so the bottom of your foot faces medially inward. So here you've rolled to the outside of your, an of your ankle. Bottom of your foot is facing to the inside here. Eversion is a little bit more difficult. That's where you take the bottom of your foot and turn it outward laterally. And of course, very much at either one of those is liable to snap off those lateral or medial malleolus, malleolus down in your ankle. That's the very distal part of that tibia and fibula. That was covered in a previous video. And looking at range of motion, it can be active or passive. Active is what you have as far as the skeletal muscle movement and contraction. And then passive is an additional amount added to that range, which would be applied by some outside force. Something has to be working along with the muscles to accomplish that. So you can accomplish all this here in different ways, and they're influenced by things like the shapes of the bones where they come together, the amount of cartilage, tendons, ligaments, and other structures that you'll see.